Hello and welcome to 10 Minutes with the Object. In this episode, we're going to be talking about Dell Technologies Elastic Cloud Storage and how Ansible is helping people to automate some of the routine tasks uh, that need to be completed on object storage on-prem. So today I'm joined by one of Dell Technologies SE's, Evan Kutz-Andrews. Uh, Evan, welcome to the show. Thank you, Chris. And uh, I'm looking forward to this, the show how we can integrate with Ansible workflows with ECS. Yeah, so tell me about how you got into Ansible. Well, um, I currently work for Dell Technologies and I have all sorts of clients from different industries, whether it be research, finance or retail. And what we're seeing now, especially in this cloud enabled world is looking for automation and automation, being able to automate tasks of configuration, management, provisioning across all sorts of environments. So to get to that level of DevOps, Ansible's become a widely popular tool. And that's mainly because of its easy to use functionality, agentless connectivity to the particular devices and operating systems that can be managed. Interesting. Okay, well look, thanks Evan for being here with us. So what we might do is take a look at some of the stuff you prepared uh, for us and um, let's explore that with everybody. Fantastic. All right, Evan, what do you have planned for us today? Well, today I'm going to show how we can use Ansible to connect to ECS via the management API. So what you see on the screen right now is we're logging into the ECS management console. What we'll do is use the Ansible URI modules to create a namespace using Ansible on ECS and then create an object user again with Ansible on ECS for that particular namespace. Okay, so for this, we're using a management API as opposed to an S3 API. Correct, so ECS being an appliance that you would have on-prem, your cloud storage on-prem, um, has a management interface for the system engineers and administrators responsible for the device. Okay, so I guess here, what are you doing with um, the first Ansible playbook? Here, the first thing we're going to do is use Ansible to call uh, the URI module on ECS that we can uh, create a namespace for. Interesting. Okay, now I see there's a bit of red text and an error. What does that mean? So because we're just calling a generic REST API using the URI module for Ansible, um, the first part of the playbook is to check whether that namespace exists. If it doesn't exist, then we go and create it. Yep, sounds logical. Okay, so Ida Potency and Ansible, how does that work, Evan? Ansible is a configuration management tool and you specify, you declare a state. So every time you run an Ansible playbook, it expects to see a certain state. If a state doesn't exist, then it'll action it to become the desired state. So for instance, when we create a namespace or a user, Ansible will only create it if it doesn't exist. Right, okay, so that's what we saw with um, when you were searching before for the namespace and now here for the user, that we have no users existing at this moment. Correct. So the same process will happen as per the namespace, we're gonna create an object user that is responsible for that namespace on ECS. And the first task is to check if that exists. If it exists, Ansible will say, yep, everything is okay and not perform any tasks. In this case, we don't have a user. So the Ansible playbook on ECS management API will check and then create the user. Yeah, okay, interesting. So that's that's really good. It, it, it helps us redo things over and over again um, and not have to create or duplicate what we're doing. Yeah. Because I guess that that's what you're showing here. Exactly. Ansible can be run repeatedly against a device, against an operating system, an application, and the desired state would be adhered to. Yeah, okay. No, look, I think that's quite good. And I guess here we're, we're taking the S3 key because we're going to use that in um, another task that you've got set up with Ansible. Correct. So what we're looking at here is to use the S3 key with um, connecting to our S3 buckets in a, another, another task. So here we're looking at an Ansible S3 
module. So this is an AWS S3 module for Ansible. We're going to use this module to talk to the ECS data management API to create our bucket in the previously created namespace. To do this, mm. we need to use our object user that we also created. So and I guess this RGW is important as well. Yes, so because we're not talking to an AWS region, we're talking to a private S3 implementation on ECS, that's Dell EMC ECS, we need to mm. specify yes in that particular argument for the module. Mm, okay, that's a, probably an important configuration uh, setting to have. So now we're actually executing the playbook to create the bucket. And this is actually talking the data API. So it doesn't require administrative permissions. The administrative management API was used just to create the namespace and the object user allowed to create buckets and objects in that particular namespace. Okay, so we're not using a special module for Ansible, we're just using a common one, aren't we? Correct. Excellent. All right, so what, what's this um, ECS auditing that you're showing us here? Well, this is a bit more involved than just creating okay. a bucket. You know, many clients uh, want to have a security audit done of their systems. Ansible is a great tool to do this. So with ECS, what we can do is use an Ansible playbook calling the URI module and talking to the ECS API, management API, to list out or dump the configuration of the device. So what this playbook here is doing is authenticating against ECS management API. In this case, I'm only checking a couple example APIs, the nodes, so BDC nodes, and also the namespace for any bucket changes or data changes. Mm. Okay. Interesting. And where are you writing this to? So in this case, as an example, I'm just writing it to a log directory and it'll just output the changes. This is the first time I've executed against this ECS. So you'll see that Ansible has seen the change. Okay, so repeatedly executing this playbook, then it'll start to pick up on any changes that may have occurred between the last run and then the current running of the playbook. Correct, so what it'll do, if you were to execute this again without any change, then it would finish okay meaning Ansible hasn't found any changes, are they pregnancy aware? But if we make a change, create a new bucket or add new nodes to the ECS configuration, then you will see that it will hit a change and this playbook will log another file. Right, okay. So I guess what are we gonna do here? We're gonna create a new bucket? So yeah, so now we're just connecting or um, connecting to our ECS instance by S3 browser. Mm -hmm. So this is again using the data API to talk. So we're going to connect using our object user we created earlier, but we'll need to insert ah. our secret key to access that bucket. Of course, that's why you copied it out of the user interface back when we created that user. I did. I copied it for the playbook that I wanted to use the AWS S3 module for. And now I'm going okay. to make sure I've got the same thing uh, copied again that I can uh, enter into my S3 browser. Yeah, okay, interesting. So once we've created the second bucket and then rerun um, the audit playbook, then technically we have changed a configuration in this environment. So Ansible should then pick up on that change and identify that to us. Correct. So here we're logging in, making sure that we can log in through S3 browser, see that we've actually created the bucket by Ansible. And now is when I'll look at, well, let's add something else to that, um, to that particular namespace, another bucket. So here right, I'm just showing, okay. showing the example of creating um, another bucket using the AWS S3 module. So I created a copy of it because these are very static playbooks purely for demonstration mm. purposes. Okay. Yeah, I see. So we've got their bucket name, so you could put whatever name you wanted in there. And then uh, you put the endpoint for ECS and then the object user that we created previously to authenticate. Correct. 
Now, if you're using something like Ansible Tower, AWX, those um, keys like your username and your password will all be encrypted. You can encrypt using Ansible ah, Vault as well. But I would strongly suggest for an enterprise environment, AWX or Ansible Tower. Yeah, okay, that's probably some good advice to people who may be watching in the enterprise space um, as some advice on how to use Ansible more securely. All right, so we've got our second bucket here. So let's see what happens when we run the um, audit playbook. Let's see if it picks it up. The same thing, when you're running or creating any playbook with Ansible calling a REST API, majority mm -hmm. of REST API calls, Ansible are generic ones, Ansible won't be aware of. So you need to make sure your playbook is following those rules of IDO potency that that you know should exist in every Ansible play. Yeah, okay. No, look, I think that's some good advice. And I can see here we are getting a few changed remarks from uh, the audit playbook we're running. Yes, and that would have picked up the change in having a new bucket. Now, if we send these log files out to a syslog server or Splunk, then is that going to allow customers to then analyze what these changes actually are? Yeah, so some customers that we have at the moment will generate a dump of the configuration they want to continuously audit, maybe from a security point of view, maybe from a resources point of view. And they'll upload that particular log file that is generated to maybe something like Splunk. Universal Forwarder could be used to do that. Right. And then that's a good way to trigger actions that... Um may result from any anomalies being picked up from uh, this audit playbook, which is a good thing for uh, corporate environments. Yeah, absolutely. Um, also, you know, you could use Ansible Tower, uh, AWX, mm -hmm. to perform a very similar, I guess, alert. All right. Well, look, thank you so much, Evan. Look, thank that's you. been some great advice and, the, and work that you've been doing. So, look, thank you for sharing. It's very interesting uh, what you have and have developed there with Ansible. So, um, look, thank you for your time and I wish everyone a good day. Thank you, Chris. Much appreciated, buddy.